Hello and welcome to Dawn Chorus Writes, a miraculous ladybug fanfiction and audiofic. This is the completed series of Chance Encounter, written and narrated by Dawn myself. Hello! So I hope you enjoy it. Um, make sure you go and send lots of love to Dory for the commissioned artwork she did for the thumbnail. All her information is listed down below, so make sure you go and send her some some love make sure you send me some love by smashing that like button comment down below for what you think of it share to others who might enjoy it and make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on other series one shots and treats to come and i hope you enjoy part one marinette is 20 years old and finds herself searching the past. I mean, wow. That fabric, the texture, how it flows, and the details stitched across the front panels, it was stunning. Even after hundreds of years, the red still stood out against the golden threads. Marinette stared at the tiny details as her pencil skimmed across her sketch pad attempting to capture the dress with some form of justice. No wonder it had been selected to be the inspiring showpiece in Gabriel's newest collaboration, picturing how the woman of nobility would have worn these types of gowns as they walked through the palaces or the streets. It was a tradition over the years for her and her maman to pick out a new TV drama to watch together. The most recently, they had been watching a historical drama which blended in with the martial arts world. She loved watching the overdramatic fighting scenes, especially compared to her own as Ladybug. But it wasn't until she had been searching for inspiration for her up-and-coming showpiece that the idea blossomed into her mind, sigh. Then, when she saw the press release for Gabriel's newest collaboration, she needed to see the actual gown for herself in the Louvre. The fashion show was taking place in one of the events rooms in the Louvre, which meant he had managed to not only shut down the whole of the museum for it, but also move the inspiration for the show upstairs. Only that man could pull in those types of favours. A hand tightened over the pencil as it dug deeper into the paper. She hated how she still looked up to this man as a fashion icon, especially knowing what his true personality was like. She sighed, unable to control her thoughts as it automatically shifted to Adrian, wondering how he was doing. She had seen glimpses of him over the past two years from a distance and of course his image was still smeared across magazines and billboards across the city, the false smile following her around wherever she went. And yet, in reality, she had lost her friend, just like that. He had disappeared from her life without reason. She shook her head. No. Oh, what was the point in riding this merry-go-round? She had questioned it so many times over the years, made umpteen excuses for his unexpected cold behaviour towards her after he stood her up for their first official date, never finding out why. No. No. That path only led to heartache. She had moved on. In fact, he was behind her now. She didn't need Adrian, not when she had Kitty as Marinette, of course. The line with Ladybug couldn't be crossed, but not with Hogmoth or whatever rebranding he'd come up with nowadays. But as Marinette gazed at the dress poised in the glass cabinet in front of her, images of her previous trip to Shanghai played out in her mind feeling like it happened only yesterday instead of six years ago. Why she had thought it was a good idea to chase Adrian across the globe, sensing a deep blush darkening her cheeks. Maybe it was a good thing that her relationship with Adrian never happened. She had created this perfect image in her mind that no person could live up to, not even Adrian Agress. No. Even though she still didn't officially know the man behind the black mask, it was a healthier relationship than her obsession with Adrian had been. I mean, Kitty had his flaws. He was an utter geek, which she loved about him. Or 
how the relationship had blossomed from friendship to, could you call it dating? Less than a week ago, they had shared their first kiss, and their first official date was tomorrow. Which he was totally not nervous about. Uh, this was Kitty here. He would never abandon her, not like Adrian had done. This man meant the words he said, didn't he? Okay, clearly she was getting off topic. She had come here to work, to sketch, to gain inspiration, not to travel back in time and think about a certain boy when I'm falling in love with another. No, no, she could never trust Adrian with a heart again, not any part of her life. She no longer knew him, and it's not like he wanted to be with her anyhow. No, he had made that point clear. Her pencil digging so hard into the paper, causing a hole and the nib to break off. She flipped the page over in a sketchbook, replacing the medium with a soft charcoal. She carefully pressed it into the thick paper, smudging the line, adding shadow to the skirt, and trying to picture it in her mind, how the fabric would flutter and ripple in movement, and how she would recreate it with more modern fabrics instead of this traditional handmade silk used in this historical piece. However, after her third pause, her drifting mind refusing to focus, battling back thoughts and images of Kitty and Adrian fighting against one another, one was a prince in a grand silk robe and a tight top bun, whilst Kitty was a master in martial arts world, leaping across the rooftops, protecting the people. She found herself grinning at her recasting a certain scene in Who Rules the World? Not that a kitty was also the prince. She groaned, rubbing her head and ended up smudging the black charcoal across her forehead. Yeah, that was clearly enough sketching for one day. She slammed her book shut and zipped up her pencil case, ramming them back inside her bag. She would clean herself up in the toilets before a stroll along the river to the bakery, hoping the light summer breeze would help to clear her thoughts so that she was able to focus on what she needed to do. But when she emerged from the toilet and heard an explosion erupt, shaking the foundation of the museum and causing the accumulate to blast out of the speakers in the foyer as it guided everyone to the nearest safe location, she couldn't help growling through her gritted teeth. Seriously, this was the last thing she needed today. But then again, to gain a smile from Kitty might be the sunshine she needed. She filtered back through the crowd and waited in the vacant toilet cubicle. Tiki flew out of her bag and faced through the door to check they were alone. Marinette, what is making you so flustered today? Her little Kwame folded her paws across her front and stared at her with one of her special looks. The one that caused Marinette's hair on the back of her neck to stand on end as a cold sweat trickled down her back. I'm not flustered, just distracted. Marinette waved her hand through the air, dismissing the notion. If dating Cat is having this impact on you, distracting you, then maybe it's not a good idea for Marinette to be romantic with Cat and remain friends. So you can focus on Tiki. We have talked about this. Yes, I'm nervous, but if Marinette dates Cat, it won't impact on Ladybug's relationship. At the end of the day, he is my friend, my partner. But Marinette! Marinette huffed. Tiki! It's different now. We are both older. We aren't teenagers anymore. And how I feel about Cat? It's different from Adrian. I'm only looking out for you. Marinette let out a long breath, attempting to calm down the buzz surging through her, aching to fight. I know, and thank you, Tiki. She smiled as Tiki gave her cheek a little nuzzle. But can we talk about this later? I think we had better transform. Kitty might be out there dealing with his Sakuma by himself. She gave a little red bug a slight pat on the head, causing a cute giggle to burst out. Tiki, spots on. Ladybug rushed out of the toilets and darted across a now empty foyer, taking in the newly formed hole in the roof where the overhanging to the escalators should have been. 
She whipped out her yo-yo and zipped through the gap and landed on the pavement outside. Squinting at the midday sun glinting off the cracked glass pyramid in the centre of the plaza, she scanned the surrounding area for anybody left behind. The alert had done its job and cleared the streets, creating an eerie silence in what normally was an over-tourist spot. But where could the villain be? Where was Cat? She needed higher ground. Flying through the air, smiling at the familiar rush, she landed on the tiles and wasn't prepared for what she saw. Bouncing off the roofs a few streets away were figures dressed in black, including a piece of black fabric across their faces. Bracing thin blade swords her mom had told her were called Do. The same she had seen moments earlier back in the museum. They acted like a group of assassins straight out of the drama she was currently enjoying, looking like they were hunting for someone or something. Taken back, Ladybug paused for a moment. Was it a group acclimatization, or if so, who was the leader? When suddenly the answer declared itself surging down the streets below, concealed in a gush of wind, it flew, gliding from one side to another, flapping its long silk sleeves as if they were delicate butterfly wings. The villain came to a stop and exposed her soft silk gown in full glory. It started off as a cream colour at the top, but blended into a lilac and then grey at the bottom, with a deeper lilac for a sash around her waist. Her long black hair fluttered across her face and hiding aspects of a purple mask blending around her eyes, as if it was extreme makeup. If she wasn't Ladybug right this second, she would have happily gotten out a sketchbook and used this new villain as an inspiration drawing. Wait, was it a coincidence that the villain had taken on this form around the Louvre? By the look of her, she had to be linked to the fashion show. Ladybug swung out and landed in the street below as the villain fluttered her butterfly sleeves and leapt 20 feet through the air. She was fast, too fast for just her to capture. Where was that cat? She held it open, her yo-yo, and dialed his number, but there was no answer. What on earth? How was he not aware of what was happening right now? He had mentioned being busy today. His civilian side of himself, that is. Did it mean he was out of town? The mass assassins descended around her, taking to the streets and pursuing the leader. Darting around parked cars so not to be seen, LB tried to keep up scanning the block for anyone left behind, knowing there would be always some eager Kuma watchers hoping to get an exclusive clip to post on social media. She was about to dart down another side street when she spotted a man, dressed in a fine suit, storming on the spot, situated behind the museum and was barking at the person on the other end of the conversation. But as soon as she had spotted the man, so did the assassins. LB whipped out her yo-yo. Sir, you need to get back inside. How could you? After last time? The young man shouted. Move! Startled by LB yelling at him, the young man stopped what he was doing and looked up as five of the black-figured men ran towards him with their day swords held in their hands. Ladybug landed down in front and flung out a yo-yo, battling back the swings of the swords. How much she wished she had Cat and his bat on right this second. They were cornered against the building. The only way out was up. We need to act as fast and as one. You need to grab hold of me and I will lift us up above. She darted a look to the side and was greeted by a blonde hair and green eyes. A Adrian? The shock at seeing his face and the determined expression developing across his figures caused LB to pause. It was barely a split second, but it was long enough to let her guard down. Ladybug, watch out! Adrian called out, yanking her to the side and away from an oncoming blade, angling himself in front. Aggress. You will pay for what you have done. You will bow before Princess Fang and my army of... A sudden gust of wind surged towards them, giving her the exact distraction LB needed for them to escape. Hold on! Solid arms folded around her waist as she flung out her yo-yo, 
She wasn't sure, but swears she could hear a cry of pain amongst the deafening crash below and the wind filling up her eardrums. Before stopping, she continued to zip out her yo-yo until there was enough distance between themselves and the group of assassins and their leader. They ended up across Paris and landed down on the plaza in front of the Sacre Coeur and instantly got surrounded by visiting tourists wanting autographs of not only of Ladybug but of Adrian Agress too. I need everyone to step back and move to safety. There is currently a dangerous Akuma loose in the city. Please, I need you all to leave. Ladybug used her official voice as she directed her look from faces to mobile phones positioned in front of their faces. Now, if you please. A few people did as she commanded. The rest continued rounds of flashes as the camera in their phones clicked away. Maybe this wasn't a smart move. What about one of the ledges on the church? Then you can get a better viewpoint, Adrian whispered into her ear, his arms still wrapped around Ladybug's waist, guessing what the news articles are going to be saying within the hour. LB nodded her head. Please, this is serious. Get to safety, she said in a softer tone this time and aimed her yo-yo towards the grand church in front of them, landing on the side. We should be safe here for a quick breather. I will send Kat a message to say where we are. She felt the pressure release from around her waist and heard him let out a moan in pain. What's wrong? Are you hurt? For the first time, she turned and faced him, searching for signs of injuries. Ladybug? There was a strange, bewildered sound to his voice as her head darted, studying his body. Where does it hurt? When was it? She continued to look him over, keeping her sight anywhere but his face. Fearful she might give away the array of emotions she was currently feeling after seeing him again after all this time. Why did it have to be today? It's my arm, but I'm fine. Adrian inhaled sharply as he held his right arm closely against his chest. It doesn't sound fine. It sounds like you're in a lot of pain. Please, let me check. After all, it's my fault. Without waiting for an answer, Ladybug carefully cradled his arm in her hands. It felt bruised, possibly sprained. Can you move your fingers? A little, he moaned as he barely shifted. Great. Ugh. Just great. Well, you should be healed by the miraculous ladybugs at the end, but first I need to capture the kuma. But I'm sorry. Ladybug, this isn't your fault. I should have been... Oh, I know better than to be out on the street. I was just... I was the one who was distracted. Adrian angled his head, trying to look her in the face. More like yelling at someone... Must say, I haven't seen that side of you, but it has been a while since we have crossed paths. She shifted a gaze towards his eyes. Oh, that was a mistake. I suppose it has been. Quickly, she turned her back to him. I need to wrap your arm up it like a sling. It might help with the pain and any further damage. I will be right back. Should be able to get something from my mart. Wait! What about this? Adrian gritted his teeth as he let go of his damaged arm so that he could pull something out of his pocket. Would this... Uh, this scarf work? It's summer and you have a scarf? Ladybug laughed, turning around, but the sound became muffled as the words became lost in her mouth, unable to escape as he produced a blue scarf. Her blue scarf out of his jacket pocket. A special friend gave it to me as a gift. A f friend? A special friend? Okay, Elby. Take a deep breath. There was no reason why Ladybug right now would become flustered and blushing over this fact. She watched as Adrian rubbed the material between his fingers in a gentle manner. It's a long story, but the cliff notes are, it was implied that it was from my father, but I later discovered it was from Marinette. 
your special friend? The dismissive tone was clear in her voice, catching Adrian's attention. No, distance yourself. Stay professional. You were Ladybug and not Marinette right now. Well, like I said, it's a long story. Maybe some other time. Ladybug took the scarf out of his hand and stretched it out, double-checking the length of it against Adrian, who was now more mature frame. After all, she had made it for the younger version of this man. This should work as a sling, it's strong, being knitted together. She slipped it through the gap, supporting the weight and tying it off around his neck. How does that feel? Better. Thank you, Ladybug. But hadn't... You must have meant a lot to her, for such a gift. Are you still close, since you have the scarf in summer? What was she doing? Now was not the time for this conversation, but then again, when would she gain another opportunity to discover the truth? She popped her head up and locked onto his eyes, which were struggling to hold the stare. His shoulders slumped, his expression shifted for anguish to confusion. To a tenderness. Marinette was, is, his eyes suddenly darted to the side, his free hand reaching out to her. Watch out! Part 2. Adrian is 21 years old and is trapped. Great, just great. Okay, so how was he going to get out of this one? The pain emitted out of his shoulder caused a fog to filter through his mind and muddling his thoughts. How could he allow himself to get so caught up in yet again one of his father's tricks and dealing with the chaos afterwards? Distracted to the point that he ignored Plag trying to gain his attention. Shouting down the phone to Natalie at how his father had changed his aspects of the collaboration without informing the other artist, Miss Bay. Now his job was to mediate between the pair before the show went live in a few days. This hadn't been the arrangement he'd made with his father two years ago in aid of protecting Marinette. Now using it as a carrot to dangle in front of him whenever there was a problem to be solved and needing to be the face of the brand. But then again, there was nothing he wouldn't do for Marinette. Oh, blast! This issue now was going to impact on Kat's date with her tomorrow if he couldn't get it sorted in time. No, this date had to happen. He had planned it all out to the point he was going to confess everything to her. He loved her. However, all of that had now led to the artist being akumatized. He guessed it was her support and security team were the ones transformed into a group of assassins flying towards him and Ladybug swooping in to protect him. And now he wasn't able to transform into Cat. And don't get him started on how he was going to manage his damaged arm. Could this day get any worse? He tried to grit his teeth against the sharp pain around his shoulder joint and shooting bolts of lightning down his arm. Once he could convince Ladybug to hide him somewhere to allow her to fight and him to transform, could Plague even help with covering up this injury? How was he going to explain it to Ladybug? Well, that was only an issue he had to face once he was alone, and by the look of concern on Ladybug's face right this second, he wasn't sure when that would be. Well, you should be healed by the miraculous Ladybugs at the end, but first I need to capture the Akuma. But I'm sorry. She did that expression of mixed emotions, throwing her eyebrows in concern whilst pursing her lips together, but with a slight lift in the corner of her mouth. He wanted to reassure his partner that he will be fine. It was no big deal. None of this was on her. In fact, it was all on him. Ladybug, this isn't your fault. I should have been... I know better than to be out on the street. I was the one distracted. He angled his head, trying to look at her in the face. 
More like yelling at someone on the phone. Must say, I haven't seen that side of you, but it's been a while since we've crossed paths. For the first time, she shifted her gaze towards his eyes and felt the nervousness behind them. I suppose it has been. She quickly turned her back to him. Kat knew Ladybug all too well now. She was hiding something. She was avoiding something or someone. Him? I need to wrap your arm up like a sling. It might help with the pain and stop any further damage. I will be right back. Should be able to get something from my mart. Now was not the time to scavenge through the shops. Not when he had... Wait! What about this? <sighs> Adrian gritted his teeth as he let go of his damaged arm so he could pull it out of his pocket. <clears throat> uh, would this scarf work? It would be fine if any damage came to it. The tiny bugs would fix it, right? <laughs> it's summer and you have a scarf? He was surprised by Ladybug's laugh, but then even more so as he watched her eyes widened at the sight of the blue scarf. It's not like Ladybug would recognise it. A special friend gave it to me as a gift. A friend? A special friend? For a moment, Adrian became lost in the memory of a younger marinette all flustered standing in front of him, holding out the gift box. If only he had accepted it and not let Chloe ruin things yet again. He rubbed the material between his fingers in a gentle manner. It's a long story, but the cliff notes are, it was implied, it was from my father, but I later discovered it was from Marinette. Your special friend. That tone didn't sound like Ladybug. What was making her act like this? They had fought in Akuma the other day. She even seemed fine then, if not a little flirty with Cat, but they were just good friends now. The best of friends. He loved Marinette. Wait. Didn't she imply before that she was kind of friends with Ladybug? Maybe she knows about Adrian. What he did to her? Oh, this was not good. Well, like I said, it's a long story. Maybe some other time. Ladybug snatched the scarf out of his hand and stretched it out as if measuring it. Strange. It reminded him of... This should work as a sling. It's strong, being knitted together. He watched how she focused on the task, carefully, gently supporting the weight of his arm as she tied it off around his neck. Why were Ladybug's mannerisms suddenly reminding him of... Marinette, when they hadn't done before? How does that feel? Why was she taking the time to care for him when she had an Akuma to battle? Bella, thank you, Ladybug, but hadn't? You must have meant a lot to her. For such a gift? Are you still close? Since you have the scarf? In summer. Air lodged in his throat, unable to breathe in or out. It simply lingered as the words buffered around his mind. Why was she asking about the scarf? Why would it matter to her if he had a scarf in his pocket from a friend? If she knew what happened between himself and Marinette, why was she acting like this? And why now? Oh, crackers. What should he say? He found it impossible to hold her gaze as she looked at him with a questioning ladybug stare feeling the reaction it was having on his body, feeling the need to cave in on himself. Marinette was... is... His eyes suddenly darted to the side towards the black form standing on the building opposite them, lifting his arms, stretching out. 
Adrian's free hand reached out to her. Watch out! He yelled, grabbing at her arm and using his body weight. He flung her out of the way from an oncoming arrow? They both slammed into the nearest dome. He cried out in pain as the impact shot through his shoulder and ricocheted out of his chest and fingers. Thanks. Her voice was soft, their faces close enough that he felt her breath on his cheek and stared at the familiar blue eyes. No, shake it off. It's Ladybug. You no longer have feelings for her. Are you all right? I think we'd better move from here and find somewhere safer. He let go of his grip around her waist and took a step back, while stood in the spot where the assassin was still perched, waiting for another opening. We need to move fast. The figure, it's still there. He glanced back at Ladybug and noticed she too was blushing slightly underneath her mask. Yeah, okay. There's a spot nearby that Cat and I use. It's kind of unusual, but it should give us enough shelter so that you can explain to me what is happening and who has been akumatized since they were you. Ladybug pulled him in close just as another arrow zipped past his chest and smashed into the side of the dome window next to them. I need you to grip onto me as hard as you can. A rush of heat filled his face and radiated out of his cheeks. Why on earth was Ladybug yanking this form of reaction out of him? The slates gave way to air. The wind cooled his skin and his stomach lurched with the swing-like motion. But he knew where they were heading, St. Vincent Cemetery, on the other side of Montmartre and back towards the city centre. They had discovered this strange spot a year ago during a kuma fight, using it for much cover like now, and found themselves returning sitting amongst the once legendary artists of Montmartre, with the high overhanging buildings circling around the square, rows of trees and their branches filled with fresh green leaves, providing protection for the grand tombs coated in moss and ivy. But the spot they used from time to time was in the far corner, next to a family grave that seemed to be forgotten about long ago. His shoes clicked on the worn down flagstones, it was strange to hear the sound when he was used to the silence of his boots. The revelation brought a smile to his face. He was grateful Ladybug had chosen to bring them here and felt a bizarre sense of security at the silent surroundings. Do you think we were followed? I didn't see Princess Fang and her group of assassins in pursuit. I know it's not usual to bring Adrian a grip. She paused and looked around, pressing her lips together. We should be safe here, at least for a while, and I can figure out how to defeat her. Plus, Kat knows of this place and might find us here. She let go of Adrian and opened her yo-yo, staring at the screen as if she was expecting a phone call, like a pining teenager. Why hasn't he messaged me? He would normally reach out by now. It's not like him. She huffed, closing it shut and placing it back round her waist. He felt a blush forming on his cheeks for another reason now. How are you feeling now? Are you getting a fever? Your cheeks are flushed. Were you cut and didn't tell me about it? Without warning, Ladybug put her hand to his forehead and then laughed, pulling it away again. Sorry, it's not like I could feel it anyhow with the suit on. It's fine. It must be the pain caused it to happen. He ambled over to a nearby bench and took a seat, bewildered at what was going on between them. It was starting to feel like the past two or more years hadn't happened. So why this villain? Princess Fang and her group of assassins after you? She perched at the end of the bench as far away from him as possible. I think it's Miss Bay and her support team, and possibly her security team too. She is a designer from Shanghai who my father has been collaborating with for the past six months. However, Mr. Aggressed being Mr. Aggressed, 
asked me to support and oversee the final show coming together whilst at the last second changed the key piece of the design without informing the other designer until this morning. Why? I mean, why does he do it? Why does he have to make my life so difficult that only his opinion matters? I'm sick of him. I'm sick of... Ugh. Sorry. Sorry. He was standing now, holding his good arm up in the air as if pleading to a higher power for answers. His heart thumping in his chest as a tingling sensation coursed through him. It felt good to let it out like that. One of the downsides of Cat, no matter how many times Ladybug or Marinette asked if he was alright when he was clearly stressed, he was never able to express himself so freely. And due to the aftermath of how he treated Marinette, there wasn't a great deal of friends he, Adrian, could lean on. Ladybug awkwardly rose to her feet, clearly shocked at by what she had witnessed, but there was a softness in her blue eyes, suggesting concern for a friend. She reached out her hand in front and took a step closer. It lingered in the air before falling by her side. Don't be. It sounds like you needed to vent. I get that, but why put up with it? Have you told him how you feel? He shifted his gaze to his beloved blue scarf. The first token Marinette had given to him, to express her feelings towards Adrian, her first act of selfless love, a reminder of why he was putting up with his father after he had threatened to blacklist Marinette from the design world, including her place at art college, if he didn't sever all ties with her in that instant. And he knew his father would, could be that cruel, that calculated, cold focus, working out how to get what he wanted out of the situation, knowing he had all the power. He carefully rubbed his cheek against the soft material on his shoulder, secretly smearing the single tear which had broken free. There is no use. He pinned me into a corner a while ago. It's a long story. Yes. It had been good to vent to Ladybug, but the secret was still his to keep until he was able to confide in Marinette first, knowing how disappointed she will be with him, sacrificing for her, but he would do anything for her. You seem to have a lot of long stories nowadays, Adrian. I suppose it's one of the costs of not seeing each other in a while. The words hovered in the air between them and convey a deeper meaning. Uh, yeah. Anyhow, um, we should focus. I mean, you, Ladybug, and then leave me here. I I'm sure I will be safe enough. He ran his hand through his hair, wishing he could grab a moment alone to speak to Plague in his pocket. They're after you. They're after the miraculous. You and Cat, when he shows up. Ladybug stepped closer and narrowed her eyes at him. Adrian, you were injured. You can't take the chance if they do find you. But I will only hold you back from fighting if all you are doing is babysitting me. Adrian hadn't meant to raise his voice at Ladybug, but the frustration was bubbling up inside of him and bursting out. Capturing the Kuma is what matters, not me. I know this, Adrian. She snapped back. But my job is also to protect the civilians, especially when they are the target. Now, if I had Cat... Oh, where is he? I can't do it without him, and it's not like I can call on another holder. He watched the anger in her expression transformed into panic. Take a deep breath, Ladybug. We can come up with a solution together. Without thinking, he circled his good arm around her and held her tight. A move Cat would perform when it looked like his lady was on the brink of a panic attack. She inhaled deeply, crushing against his damaged arm as he fought back the pain. Oh, what should he do? This was not the plan. To hide away whilst Paris got attacked? 
All because Ladybug didn't want to leave Adrian. But he wasn't just Adrian. He was Cat Noir. The only person who could help her, not hinder her. No, he no longer had a choice. Ideally, he wanted to tell Marinette first, but maybe now was the time he revealed to Ladybug his identity. It was the only solution he could think of. It was the only way to save Paris. To save Marinette. Ladybug, I need to tell you something, but promise me you will keep breathing? He waited for the nod of her head against his chest. Okay, he was going to do it. He inhaled deeply and engulfed the scent of raspberries and vanilla, reminding him of... A surge of wind channeled through the graves and almost knocking them off their feet as the princess glided to a stop in front of them, grinning in delight. She looked nothing like Miss Bai now, who was normally controlled and restricted, but rather a martial arts warrior from his old manga comics or a character from a show he had seen Marinette watching. Ladybug and Adrian aggressed together. Princess Fang announced with glee as she scanned the surroundings. Now, where is Cat Noir? Is he hiding somewhere, ready to pounce? Stand behind me, Ladybug muttered underneath her breath as she whipped out her yo-yo and stepped out in front. I will make it easy for you. Hand over Mr. Egress and your miraculous, and I won't unleash my army upon you. The princess flapped back her sleeves in response to the swirling yo-yo. Was this his chance? Whilst Ladybug was distracted, could he run off and transform? How much he wished he was holding his baton at this moment. That will never happen. You can't have Adrian nor my miraculous. But I will find where the Akuma is hidden. Ladybug glanced back at him, freezing him to the spot. Maybe it wasn't going to be so easy after all. I'm pleased to hear that. The velvet voice brought a shiver to travel down his back. Princess Fang leapt into the air, threw out her arm as a long piece of silk fabric was unleashed from her sleeve, hitting against the yo-yo like an iron fist, causing Ladybug to jump back in defence. Adrian needed to act. He needed a weapon, something to fight, but the only thing around him were rocks and a few scattered of sticks a child would use as a sword. How was this going to fend off the ten assassins who were making their way across the graves and towards him? Part 3 Ladybug was wondering if this was the battle she would lose. The strip of fabric acted like it had a mind of its own. How it swirled through the air was elegant, but the impact against her yo-yo was one of the strongest she had felt. Her feet struggled to gain footing as she slid backwards, her back slamming against one of the tombs. Quickly, she rolled to the side as the fabric flew towards her again and smashed against stone, sending bullets of fragmented granite to explode through the air. One at least hit an assassin she noticed was heading towards Adrian. Another bullet smashed into the trunk of a nearby tree while she spun her yo-yo as fast as she could, blocking against two more shots. There was no let-up. While she had been distracted, Princess Feng had now twirled through the air and was heading straight towards her. There was no time to plan. She simply had to allow her body and training to react. A hand flew towards her chest, but she blocked it. Then another, her feet shifting ever so slightly as if they were performing a dance. But all she knew was how to defend, not attack. Then before she realised what was happening, the strip of fabric had wrapped itself around her waist and spun her against another tomb before landing face down in the dirt. Ladybug's body ached a little from the impact, but she had to shrug it off and allow the adrenaline to kick in. She darted her sight to the side at the sound of Adrian fighting caught her attention. 
this was no good. Neither of them was going to survive this. Never mind when if they remained here. Trapped. She needed to find a way out. She needed Cat. But he wasn't here. It was just her and Adrian. They needed to act like a team and put the past behind her for the present. Give up, Ladybug, and hand me your miraculous. You can't save yourself and Adrian Agrest. He will pay the ultimate price for his betrayal. Princess Fang called out, flapping back her silk sleeves. A gust of wind swirled around her, the grit hitting against her face, forcing her eyes shut, but noticed the vibrations ripple through the ground and the sounds surrounding her. Blades clashing against one another, followed by the solid whack of wood, a burst shot through the earth, followed by fabric flapping in the breeze. Ladybug reacted, rolling to the side as another eruption of stone descended over her. She needed to collect herself. She needed to focus. She was Ladybug, but ever since seeing Adrian, she had become unbalanced, not a usual one step ahead. Never! Not today. Not ever. Ladybug took a breath whilst wiping the muck from her face. The princess was setting herself up for another attack. One arm was stretched out front with two fingers pressed together, pointing towards her, while she curled the other arm behind her in an attack pose. The image brought more memories of a fight scene she had watched with her mom, who noted it wasn't much different from the Tai Chi moves they had been practicing every Sunday morning. These just happen to be faster. It's all about directing your chi, using the energy force that's within you, her mum had commented. Then a thought occurred to her. What if she combined it with tiki? Each time they had performed the moves, she had felt stronger as Marinette, but hadn't thought to use it as Ladybug. Could it work? Her gut... Or was it Tiki? Either way, something in her was telling her she had to try. At this present moment, she had nothing to lose. Ladybug jumped and planted her feet to the ground, taking a deep breath. This was part of her. This was her own heritage. As she exhaled, pressing out her arms in a ready stance, as a surge of energy rushed through her, much like it had done when she created the charms for the first time. She felt connected to a Kwame in a whole new way as a glow radiated out of her, transforming her suit. She was ready. It was her turn to attack. Adrian scurried the ground for a stick that was suitable. Five of the assassins held back, switching their blades for arrows, whilst the other five kept moving towards as the glint of their blades bounced off the late afternoon sun. As Cat, he was used to battling with his baton. But as Adrian, he hadn't picked up his saber since leaving school and putting his fencing behind. Right now, he had to think more like Cat than Adrian. The only difference was the mask, and maybe the lack of magical suit if he got hit on top of his already damaged arm. No, focus. He could do this. He had to do this. If he could direct the fight to the right, away from Ladybug and towards the small door in the back wall, he could use the old passageway to the catacombs to transform, possibly lead them away from Ladybug. The first assassin made his move. He flew towards Adrian with his sword outstretched. Quickly, he skidded to the side and blocked the blade. The second assassin came at him from the opposite side. Adrian spun round. The blade skimmed over his jacket as he swung the stick through the air and whacked it across the mast's head. There was no time to think, only to react, defend, attack. All the elegance of the fencing went within seconds of the fight as his right foot slammed into the torso of another assassin, causing him to fall backwards. His heart was racing to the point he was struggling to catch his breath realising how much he relied on his suit to maintain his endurance. Adrian, you need to transform! Plag growled from his pocket. No, not letting open! Adrian replied through gritted teeth, swinging the branch through the air and smashing it against a blade. 
If you don't, I'll use my catalysm. Plag was buzzing in his pocket and Adrian knew he meant it. No, Plag! Distracted for a second, he didn't move fast enough as one of the blades caught against his side, slicing through his jacket and nicked his skin. The burning pain was instant and so was the blood. Adrian cried out in pain. Adrian! I'm coming! Ladybug yelled. No! I'm... Okay! Adrian called back, not wanting to distract Ladybug. It was painful, but hoped the cut hadn't been deep. Do you want to die? Plag snarled. With his new injury, his Kwame knew he didn't have much fight left in him. He had no choice. The fight wasn't going in the direction he was hoping for. At this point, he was only trying to survive, hoping to get him and Ladybug out of this trap situation, even if it cost his identity. He shuffled backwards, ignoring the pain and the sensation of soaked fabric clinging against his skin. He scanned his surroundings for any form of shelter in case Hawkmoth was watching, as his back hit against a tree, causing him to stumble against the roots and crash to the ground, crying out in pain. Before he knew what was happening, Adrian was surrounded by a wave of green light washing over him and felt a wave of relief as part of the pain descended. He was cat. Within a second, he grabbed his baton, smashed it against the blade that was aimed at his head. He jumped to his feet, deflected another blow. His left arm still didn't work right, but the pain on his side had improved. He kicked back an attacker while swinging out his baton at another. He needed a distraction to allow him to rush to Ladybug. Catalysm! He pointed his claw finger at the base of the tree and darted backwards as the lower half of the trunk disintegrated whilst the branches smashed into the ground and taking out three of the assassins. Extending his baton, he levered across the graves and landed next to Ladybug who was twirling through the air before her palm hit the princess in the chest, knocking her backwards a few feet. Ladybug, we need to go! Cat called out, reaching his hand out to her. Cat? Oh, thank... Adrian! Where is he? How did you... A baffled expression spread across her face as she stared at the scene behind him. Her eyes widened. Cat, watch out! She swung her yo-yo in a circle and blocked an arrow coming towards him. Thanks. We need to get out of here. I'll explain. Without thinking, he grabbed Ladybug around the waist with his damaged arm and winced at the pain. Are you? Your arm? Her eyes narrowed. Ugh, Lita! He gritted his teeth. Ignore it. He could handle the pain for a short time. The villains were starting to descend around them. Digging his fingers harder against her waist, he yanked the ladybug close against his side and extended the baton to the height of the nearest building. Crashing onto the roof, their heroes rolled across the metal. Ladybug was the first to stumble to her feet and held out a hand to Cat. Run! They weren't alone. The thunderous sound of the feet landing on the spot they had only been moments ago spurred them on. They darted from one roof to another whilst attempting to block rounds of arrows heading towards them. None of the usual high hiding places would work in this instant. They needed to get low and out of sight. The beeping sound coming from his ring also didn't help. This was not the time to be Adrian. I need to recharge, Bug. What about our usual spot, underground? You read my mind. This time, Ladybug grabbed hold of Cat and swung out her yo-yo, aimed for the street below. There! Skillfully, they landed on their feet and darted to the nearest sewer opening whilst a surge of wind rippled through the street behind them along with the princess crying out their names. He was about to swap his baton into his other hand, aiming for the metal lid as Ladybug dashed forward and did it for them, gesturing him down before closing it shut. They waited at the bottom of the ladder for any sign they were seen. Cat found himself holding his breath, listening for the familiar sound of metal scraping against the tarmac and the light shining down on them. Nothing. Then the sound of his final beep caused him to exhale. 
cat? Adrian? Your arm? How? Ladybug breathed, searching his face with the look she had when figuring out the lucky charm. Adrian is... The words were lost in his mouth. He could tell there was no use lying to her. She already knew the answer. I didn't want... All at once, the pain was returning in full force as the green light spread across his body. Ladybug stared at him, her mouth opening and closing, but there was no sound. Joy. Part 4 Ladybug is trying not to freak out. Ow! How can this be? How is Cat replaced by Adrian? It's not possible. Or was it? Wait, maybe she was hit and it was some sort of effect from an Akuma? Because there was no way Adrian had been Cat all this time? When she had thought he had left her, abandoned her, and lost one of her closest friends, had he been right by her side? He had been there for her when no one else had been, ending in her falling in love with Cat. Wait, she loves Cat, and had loved. Adrian, but if Cat is in fact Adrian, oh, this was far too much to process in this moment. Ladybug, please, to say something, the look on your face is... Yeah, she was currently Ladybug, who was discovering that Cat, her partner, is Adrian. She was not Marinette discovering Cat had lied to her, that Adrian had played some sort of game on her. No, she was Ladybug, so she had to react Ladybug level of surprise and when she finally stopped this Akuma, then she could be Marinette and break. Taking a deep breath, she took a step back from Adrian. I need... I need a moment to think. Ladybug, I didn't want you to find out like this. I can understand if it's a shock. The nervousness clear in his voice as he reached out for her. She spun round, brushing his hand off her shoulder, but catching his gaze. A shock? That cat? My partner is indeed... No. Calm down, Ladybug. I can't show the pain that I'm feeling. It wouldn't make sense to him. But there were so many questions she needed to answer. She turned away from him and headed around the corner. I need to recharge Tiki. That was a lie. She knew it. And so did he. She needed an excuse not to look at Adrian at the moment. To see the pain on his face? No. She wasn't going to be clouded or swayed by his feelings. Spots off! Marinette leaned her head against the freezing stone and closed her eyes. Images flashing across her mind of the time she spent with Adrian and moments afterwards with Kat. Without looking, she placed her hand into a bag and pulled out a macaroon, holding it out to Tiki in silence. She could hear him muttering something to his Kwame against the sound of constant flowing waters of the sewers and the noise of destruction above. And yet, neither of them talked for what she guessed was five minutes, but felt like a lifetime. Are you good? Tiki said softly next to her ear. I have to be, she said. She felt a tiny paw stroke away a tear that stained her cheek. Ready? Yeah, let's defeat this Akuma. And Ladybug, what you did before, draw on that again. 
Tiki said, trying to use her tough voice and making a small smile break across Marinette's lips. She nodded her head. Spot's on. Okay. Focus. Marinette had her moment. Now it was Ladybug's turn. She could do this. She had to do this. Adrian? The single word stuck in her throat. Yeah, I'm here. I'm sorry, Ladybug. You must be disappointed that it's me. Previous conversation popped into her head of Marinette curled up with Cat as he asked her what she would think of him once the mask was off. Maybe they shared the same fear. No, no, of course not. It's just a shock. That's all. Um, that a model could be a superhero? Yeah. To Ladybug, that was all Adrian was to her. Someone she had saved a few times and a man plastered across countless billboards. Not her Adrian. Well, so far today you have proven you aren't just a model with or without a mask on. She forced her voice to sound light, but it came out sounding weirder than anything else. She rounded the corner and aimed her gaze towards his face, locking onto his sorrow-filled green eyes. No, too much. How is your arm doing? Um, <clears throat> not the... Ugh. The words were lost in the groan of pain as he held his blue scarf in his hand beside him. It came off in... Here, I'll put it back on. She stepped forward as Adrian shuffled backwards. One's plague has gained his strength and finished. Uh, I'll be cat, so... He gave her a quizzical stare. Gesturing to his Kwame, he was surprisingly quiet, munching on his cheese and not looking at either one of them. Plague knew about her. But did that mean... Tiki knew about Adrian? I was thinking about that. I think we need Adrian for a little bit longer to help set a trap for Princess Feng. With his back against the stone wall, Ladybug took the blue scarf out of his hand, grateful she couldn't feel the soft wool in her fingers. Wait! He reached out with his better arm and placed his hand on top of hers. She couldn't help but stare at his hand. The groomed to perfection nails were now covered with dirt and blood from the scratches bedded in the palm of his hand from the stick he used to fight off the assassins. When was the last time Marinette had held his hand? Felt his skin against hers? Right now, Ladybug was the barrier when normally cat suit was it for them. Ladybug focus. The plan. Stick to the plan. I will explain the plan. Just let me do this to support your arm in the meantime. She felt some of the pressure release from his grip and shrugged off the rest as he let out a sigh. While she moved to stand beside him, stretching out the scarf, she noticed a tear in his jacket and how the fabric was darker around it. With Marinette taking over in her mind, she flung the scarf over her shoulder and ran her gloved fingers across the torn fabric and noticed how he winced at the slightest of pressure. Adrian? What is this? Were you hurt? Why didn't you... It's... It's nothing! He said through gritted teeth, trying to move away from her, but she had gripped tight onto his other arm so he couldn't move. It's not nothing. This is serious. Take your jacket off. I need to see. With the other hand, she grabbed onto the collar of his tailored suit jacket. Ladybug, we have more urgent cat. Adrian, nothing is more urgent. Some of the panic seeped out of her voice. I mean, you wouldn't be much good to me when Adrian can't move and Plague is using most of his power trying to heal you and give you enough energy to fight. That's why you transform back faster than normal. Ladybug shifted a gaze up at the black Kwame, who nodded his head in confirmation but still remained silent. Sorry, buddy. I hadn't realised, Adrian said with a tenderness that reminded her of Cat causing a sharp pain to ricochet in her heart. He remained still as she gently inched the jacket off his shoulders and threaded its damaged arm through the sleeve, 
attempting to ignore the fact their faces were merely inches apart. Disregarding his familiar scent, which he knew all too well, and his lips, the ones she had kissed less than a week ago. No! Focus! But for a split second, their eyes glanced upwards and found his staring down at her, filled with various levels of emotions and evidence of pain, wishing she could comfort him. Once the jacket was removed, she could see the cut had torn through his waistcoat, shirt and skin underneath due to the amount of blood. Kitty, she whispered, but it was loud enough to grab his attention. It's <clears throat> worse than it looks, little bug. You're bleeding. I need to stop it before... Give me a tie. She let go of him and instantly felt the void between them. Casting her gaze to the ground, she studied the small rocks against the wall and found one with a sharp edge. Sorry about your suit, but the tiny bugs should fix it afterwards. It's fine. But his words were lost in the sound of the silk lining ripping as she dug the stone in, forming a hole before yanking away from the fine stitches. She could feel his stare on her, watching her as he held out his silk scarf. As Adrian, he really did live in this luxurious world, but as Cat, he had seemed too happy to be in the simplicity of Marinette's world, watching films, cooking dinner, baking, but which one was real? Hold still. She lifted his top and exposed the gash across his waist. Adrian, this must hurt. I can't believe you were about to... Ladybug? There was a question in his voice, followed by a wince in pain, as he placed the folded scarf hard against the wound to slow the bleeding, and got his other hand to press down. Twisting the silk lining, extending the length of fabric, she wrapped her arms around him. A single gasp escaped his lips. Sorry, but I have to stop the bleeding to help Plag, and... The bugs will heal you. I need Kitty for that to happen. She regretted taking another glance at his face while she knotted the silk ends together. I could use the scarf as extra support, but I think this should hold in your arm needs more whilst you remain Adrian. She analysed the knot one last time before folding down his shirt and covering up a makeshift first aid. How does it feel now? Better, Ladybug? Thank you. She could feel his eyes boring into her. I didn't know you had such knowledge about fabrics before. It reminds me of someone dear to me who gave me the scarf. Her eyes shot upwards and locked onto his. She hadn't meant to look at him that way, but his words had caught her off guard. Now that she knew Cat was... Adrian... Did that mean he really did care about Marinette, with or without the mask on? Kept a reminder of her with him. Oh, the look on his face it was the same cat had given to Marinette, but it was now Adrian giving it to Ladybug. Did he know? No. No! She was not boarding that thought train at this present time. She had to focus and get back into the fight. Afterwards, they could... Can I have your arm? Using the excuse to tear her eyes away from his. He moved closer to her without saying a word, presenting her with a scarf with his better hand. She repeated the same moves as before, tucking the blue scarf underneath before wrapping the ends around his neck. Inching her face next to his, the tickling sensation of his breath on her cheek, his lips. A loud crash sounded above them as the ceiling of the sewers shook and fragments broke off. A reminder of why they were in this position. So, what's the plan, little bug? Adrian said with Kat's tone. Well, the princess... Feng is after you as well as the miraculous which i'm guessing is related to what you said earlier about gabriel letting you down last minute 
a dishonorable slight against her character which she needs to revenge? Pretty much. She must have found out before I could deliver the news, which only adds to the dishonor I've shown. A bitter anger showed in his voice, and she couldn't help herself as she placed a comforting hand just below the nape of his neck. Do you have an idea of where the kuma could be? His eyes were searching her face, but she kept her slow. A few days ago, when I greeted her, I presented her with a gift to mark our union. It was a hairpin made up of opals and amethysts, the same one Princess Feng is wearing, so my guess is that. She removed her hand from his back and instead used it to paint images in the air, rolling her bottom lip through her teeth in thought. Okay, so if we take out Princess Feng, that will also stop the assassins. But before that, I will need you to guard me against them, whilst I get close enough to snatch a hairpin and for you to then catalyze them it. She nodded her head and walked back and forth, not aware of the smile Adrian was giving her. Ideally, we need to break her away from the assassins to have a chance. To trap her, but where? I mean, fighting her before, she is strong to even stand a chance. I wanted to ask, what was that before? The light? Your new suit design? Which I approve of, by the way. Thanks. She couldn't help blushing. I had an idea to draw on my chi. My ma... Master taught me some moves to draw on my flow of energy, and I think Kiki really liked it. Is it something that would help Plaque? Adrian looked from his Kwame and then back at Ladybug. It's been done before. I mean, our existence is beyond one philosophy, but over the past thousand years, our guardians based in the temple worked on the theory of chi. Tiki and I are yin and yang. The connection we have, the energy around us, and if Tiki can do it, Plague crossed his paws in front of his chest, then I don't see why I can't. Really, buddy? That would be cool. Do you think it could help support and reduce the drain on you whilst I become cat with these wounds? Plag nodded and Adrian grinned, switching his focus back on Ladybug. Could you show me? You would need to be transformed whilst we do this. You need the use of both arms, she said, ignoring the soft stare he was giving her in response. Claws out! A wave of tension lifted from her as her cat was now by her side. This she could cope with switching her mindset. For the next couple of minutes, she quickly gave a brief breakdown of what her mom had told her and the drawing moves she had used in the fight earlier. Kat took a deep breath and mirrored her moves exactly. If he was in pain, he never showed it. He repeated the moves as a wash of green light filled the dank sewers, revealing a slightly older looking cat or the fact the suit now reflected his age with highlighted green lines across the seams. His muscles were more defined. Ladybug cast her eyes downwards, hoping he couldn't tell she was blushing underneath the mask. But overall, he looked more powerful. Do I need to ask? How do you feel? I feel a lot better. I mean, if it wasn't for the wounds, I'm guessing I would feel great. Even... Who would have thought? We should have asked your mum... Master, a while ago, maybe this Sunday, I could train with you and Master? He moved closer to her, but she stepped back. Would that be as Adrian or Cat? She hadn't meant to sound as harsh as she did, or wipe the smile off his face, but she wasn't there yet, and the hint? The idea that he... No, no, not here, not now. Part 5 Adrian knew. He knew. She knew. But the words were yet unspoken. He watched as her emotions shifted at least four times behind her eyes at his hint. His all-too-obvious hint that he knew. 
How could he not after the countless signs that she had shown since the chance encounter? However, the biggest one was her reaction to Cat becoming Adrian. A pain Ladybug shouldn't have felt. A pain that belonged to Marinette alone. A pain that now echoed in his chest. He was in love with Marinette. He had loved Ladybug, but they are one in the same, just like she had loved Adrian, and now he hoped was in love with Cat. Oh, they had a lot to talk about once his battle was through. Would that be as Adrian or Cat? The pain grew stronger behind her eyes. He had stepped too far with the last hint. He knew. She knew. But she was right. This was not the time for that conversation. He felt renewed after the cheap power-up, so now was the time to act, not to talk. Sorry, we should focus on task, he mumbled, but she refused to look at him. Instead, she spun round and kept her eyes fixed on her fingers, as if she was figuring out a problem. Oh, how much he wanted to entwine his fingers around hers. So, where were you thinking would be the best place to trap her? He took a step closer, then a step back, forcing restraint on himself with clenched fists at his side. She inhaled, straightening her back and neck, holding her head high and kept her back turned to him. First, you should transform back into Adrian. Second, she paused. In the open, there are too many variables. We need cover. How about back at the Louvre, where it all started? In the hall, where the fashion show is meant to take place. As Adrian, you could... Wait. Aren't there meant to be cameras rigged up so that it was shown on some big screen in the park? She spun round for confirmation, and he couldn't help smiling at how her eyes lit up, as it always did when the plan was coming together. The same sparkle Marinette had when planning her design. How had he not seen it before? This would be the point he would tease her about her convenient knowledge on the fashion show. But he was guessing that wouldn't go down well. Yeah, it should be all rigged up, ready to go. Are you thinking I should do a little speech on the screen? Draw her in? And you trap her inside whilst I guard against the onslaught of assassins to buy you some time? He wiggled his eyebrows and saw a slight curve in her lip. A hint of a smile? Hope was not lost. Yeah, something like that. Um, and I think we could do with some luck too. Lucky charm! Ladybug threw up a yo-yo and watched as a red and spotty electrical wool and thread winder used to make large bobbins dropped into her outstretched hands. She paused. And then a large grin spread across his lips, mirroring that of hers. I know what to do! They took off out of the sewers, Cat insisting he remain suited up just in case they got into trouble and travel faster. But surprisingly, it was a clear path to the Louvre. Princess Fang and her assassins were across town, causing damage to buildings as they searched for their prey. So far, it looked like luck was on their side. When Cat transformed back into Adrian, Ladybug needed to attach the scarf back into place, whilst the pain in his side became sharper. With a head next to his now in the filtered air of the ballroom, he could smell it. The scent he knew so well from Marinette, the amount of time she had curled up in his arms, wishing he could tell her the truth, and he was about to, Tomorrow was going to be their first date, and he was going to explain everything to her. Why Adrian had to break her heart to ensure her future. Why he wanted to remain close to her, to protect her, never imagining she would fall in love with his mass self. And yet, when they had kissed, he knew it was time to come clean. 
to tell her all, no matter the cost. But now what? The look on her face? How she was acting around him? He couldn't help the aching feeling in his heart. He inhaled deeply, engulfing himself in her scent before she stepped back. No, they were meant to be. Time. Time was what they needed after all this chaos. Right now, they needed to focus on winning. Everything seems like it's working. Are you ready, Adrian? Ladybug peered at him behind the camera. Adrian swept back his hair and smoothed down his filthy suit. I'm ready as I'll ever be. You just need to get her attention and get her to come here. She gave him a soft smile he knew well and always brought a sense of warmth to his heart. He nodded. Good. Three, two... She showed one with her finger and instantly the model Adrian took over. This is a message for Princess Feng. I believe I am the one you want. I have dishonoured you and your company, and for that I am willing to be punished. He curved his good arm out front and bowed. I am here in the ballroom of the Louvre, along with Ladybug and Cat Noir. You may challenge one to a duel for the miraculous, if you are worthy. He knew the last line would trigger a response. Cut! Ladybug smiled, doing the action with her hands. That was good. It won't take her long. Go and close out, Adrian declared with a smile. He had to admit it was nice he didn't have to hide it from her anymore. Oh, yeah, a blush formed under her mask. That might take me a while to get used to it. She rolled her bottom lip nervously like Marinette did. Anyway, I had better get in position before she arrives, and then I'll stand guard. He paused for a moment and turned back round to face her. Be careful. He stepped closer. His hands started at her shoulders, but with each step he took, the higher his hands slid until one was cupping her jaw and the other at the side of her face, stroking at the edge of her mask. I mean it, Marinette. Don't take risks. I can't. I can't lose you. I love you. His lips lightly brushed against hers as he felt her lashes flutter against his cheek. Same goes for you too, Adrian. I... She murmured against his lips as the ground beneath them shook. In a split second, she pushed him backwards. Hide! Oh, half of her wanted to have a girly rant inside her head at the fact that she had just kissed Cat, knowing it was Adrian. Never mind, he said, I love you to her. And she was about to say it back. The stained glass window at the end of the hall exploded, with fragments of coloured glass shattered across the polished wooden floor. The sun had given way to twilight, as hues of purple light shone behind the figure of Princess Fang floating through the hall, causing a surge of wind to follow her, tossing the perfectly placed chairs into disarray. But thankfully, she was alone. With her wing sleeves stretched out at the sides, she landed in the marked-out space for the catwalk, directly in front of Ladybug, with a cold, calculated expression. Where is Adrian Agress? Does he intend to dishonour me yet again? Ladybug clenched her yo-yo in her hand, ready to swing. You can only have Adrian once you have won my Miraculous. You can only have Adrian once you have won my Miraculous. Do you intend to finish our fight, Ladybug? Not to run off like the unworthy hero that you are? The princess narrowed her eyes as a sneer spread across her lips. It is of no matter. My assassins will quickly track him down, whilst I intend to win and gain back what belongs to me. Cat is protecting him. 
the words were hard to swallow, like a mouthful of crackers, or worst, peanut butter on crackers. Adrian, nor the miraculous belong to you, Princess Fang. I will prove you are unworthy of either one of them when I defeat you. Ladybug cleared her mind whilst breathing deep. She created a circle with her right foot, and then with the left, before raising her hands up, exhaling into a circle. She was ready. She could sense Tiki becoming stronger. The princess let out a laugh that chilled Ladybug down her spine. As a villain floated into the air, and in two moves, the spiralling fabric was darting towards her with lightning speed. LB quickly spun the yo-yo out in front, but the end of the fabric whipped against her side and sent her flying against the wall and into the raised golden floral motif. She only had a split second to shift to the side whilst the fabric slapped against the wall, sending golden shards into the air. With a flick of her wrist, her yo-yo deflected the main pieces and managed to dodge the rest. She needed out of her head and allow her body to take over and react. To pretend the last... how many hours hadn't taken place. It was just another akuma. The princess slid across the smooth surface to the sound of the fabric rippling in the breeze. Ladybug arched backwards into a crab pose, spinning around on her palms. She kicked out a leg and slammed it into the princess's chest. With a crash, she landed against a pile of chairs. LB grinned at her move and readied herself for the counter-attack. She could do this. Dancing around the floor, her body curved, dodging the oncoming fabric, followed by the fist or foot, detecting the frustration building in the villain with each attack. If LB timed the move just right, she could use the lucky charm. Suddenly, a crash. A sound mimicking that of thunder smacked against the doors to the museum on the other side. Cat! Adrian! Her attention was forced towards the man she loved, wondering how he was coping against the assassins, especially with his wounds. Secretly grateful that Cat was Adrian and Plague could help to protect him, but how long could he hold out? The princess took the brief second LB's attention was drawn away to engulf the fabric around her, trapping the hero's arms in the process, unable to defend herself as a fist slammed into her cheekbone and her eyes to water. Now unable to see, LB failed to register the boot aimed at her chest as the same time the fabric was released. Spinning across the floor, Ladybug smashed into the chairs, unable to slow the speed before hurtling into the wall. Her body cried out in pain, feeling her and Tiki's energy drain. The beep from her earring was another sharp reminder she was running out of time. Okay, it had to be now. She needed to make the final blow. Shaking off the ache which coursed through to her bones, LB tried to visualise how it would go down. Moves and counter moves. Part 6 They had everything to fight for. The past, the present, and for the future where they could be together. Cat slammed the double doors shut behind him, leaving his love to fend for herself against the villain. No! Remain strong. Stick to the plan. His job was to distract the rest so that Ladybug had better odds. All he had to do was survive long enough for her to carry out the attack and everything will be righted with the tiny bugs. They had done this countless of times to the point he had lost count over six years. So what? He now knew it was the love of his life fighting alone. That should matter, not when it had been her all along. Why would it be any different now? His cat ears could pick out a slight scuffle down the corridor. They were making their approach. He had watched a couple of films and seen a few manga animations, where the hero had used the technique of narrowing the corridors, creating a funnel effect, 
in the hopes to reduce the chances of all the enemy descending on him all at once. He quickly gathered up anything he could get his paws on and stacked them against the walls, benches, antique chairs, discarding the signs not to sit on them, and as for the priceless art, well, he was grateful for the tiny bucks. Buddy, get me through this and you can have a free for all at the cheese shop. I promise, Cat said out loud, hoping it would give Plag that extra encouragement he needed. He spun his baton in a ready stance as the lights suddenly went out. A sudden laughter erupted from his chest. <laughs> You'll have to try better than that. Through the green glow of his vision, he could make out a dark figure storming towards him, followed by another. But the plan was working. Only one could swing out his sword, whilst the other tried, climbing the stacked obstacles on either side. With a one, two, three attack, the first opponent was down. Only nine more to go. But after the fourth assassin collapsed at his feet, movement was becoming hard in the decreasing space, and he felt Plague's energy depleting. How much power was it taking his Kwame to support his injuries? He took a deep breath and swung out his baton against two swords aiming towards him. The force had taken him by surprise as he smashed into the side, causing some of the stacked objects to thunder towards his two opponents as he tried climbing back onto his feet and wincing at the steering pain in his side. This was not a good sign. He readied himself for the next attack as he heard a heart-stopping crash on the other side of the doors. Ladybug! No. Remain strong. Remain focused. She was Ladybug. She could do this, and he still had his part to play. If he should fail now, how could she cope with the assassins on top of the villains? No, he had to believe that it won't be long now. He could wait for the signal before he charged in. Ladybug scrambled to her feet. Her head was spinning from the punch, followed by slamming into the wall. But she had a plan, and it was time to act. Give up, Ladybug. You are clearly too weak to beat me. Hand me your miraculous and tell me where Adrian Agress is hiding, and all of this will stop. Never, Princess Fang. Hawkmoth will never get our miraculous, and I will never let you anywhere near Adrian. Ladybug took the opportunity of distracting to pull out the lucky charm. As she had guessed, the villain took the bait and swung out the piece of fabric, but this time Ladybug was ready. As the cloth spiralled towards her, she aimed the device and caught it in the spinning stakes. Ladybug planted her feet as the princess attempted to yank back the cloth, but the more she did, the more it wrapped round, causing a tug of war between the two of them. In a sudden flake of the villain's wrist, Ladybug lost her balance and flew against the wall her gloved fingers pressing tight onto the device. Before she had a chance to scramble to her feet, she screamed, Cat, now! Hoping her voice would carry above the noise. Within seconds, the doors at the back of the room smashed open and saw five black figures dart into the room, including her kitty. Ladybug fought back against the enraged wrench on the fabric, sensing the panic forming in the princess with cats fast approaching her. Catalism! The single word had never sounded so good coming from her kitty. The pressure gave way. They had won. Ladybug whipped out a yo-yo and used the last of her strength to spin in a circle, capturing the purple butterfly. Bye-bye, little butterfly, she breathed, watching the white wings flutter off. Her legs gave way, but instead of the sensation of crashing to the floor... Two arms wrapped around her aching body. I've got you, little bug. His soft words brought out a smile to her lips. We did it, kitty. She was exhausted and the temptation to curl up in his tightening embrace was all too much. She opened her eyes and was greeted with his piercing down at her. For the first time, she saw it. She saw him, Adrian. Staring back at her behind the black mask with a dozen of emotions brewing up at the surface. I need to release the tiny bugs, but do you want to leave before Princess here transforms back into Miss Bay? 
he let out a sigh. Oh, I think I better had. She'll already feel ashamed of her actions. I don't want to add to the embarrassment. I will make an official apology on behalf of my father tomorrow. She felt him starting to relax his grip on her. I had better let you do your thing, my lady. However much he didn't want to leave his embrace, the job wasn't finished yet. Thanks, Kitty. All of a sudden, there was an awkwardness between them. What happens next? What do they do now? I had better... She gestured to the lucky charm she held in her hand. I had better... Cat pointed towards the broken doors he stormed through only moments earlier. All Ladybug could do was nod. Was this the right time to plan a date? Was the right response to say, call you? Did he even want to? No. Instead, she watched as her kitty turned and sprinted out of the doors while she flung the charm into the air. Reckless ladybugs! A burst of rosy pink light engulfed the room as a swarm of tiny bugs wrapped around her and removed the physical pain. Princess Fang transformed into a puzzled-looking woman, with the rest of her team jumping to her aid. Miss Bay, I'm Ladybug. You and your team were akumatized, but my partner and I were able to purify it. Thank you, Ladybug. Please forgive me. Miss Bay held her hand out front in a curve and lowered her head, along with the rest of the team who had joined her. The final beep of her miraculous called out. Of course, and if you're all okay, I must go before I transform. Ladybug turned and then quickly spun back around. Adrian Agress sends his apologies, but will do so formally tomorrow, allowing you time to recover. Miss Bay nodded her head in agreement. Thank you, Ladybug, and your partner. She repeated the same formal bow before racing towards the exit and the nearest room she could find. She shut the door behind her, as the flash of red descended over her body. Tiki? Here. With one hand, Marinette caught her Kwame, and with the other pulled out a macaroon from her purse. Her legs buckled as her back slid down the door and collapsing to the ground. She could sleep for a week. I have an extra cookie in my purse once you have finished this one. Marinette smiled as Tiki practically inhaled the first treat. How are you feeling? Tired, but nothing a jar of cookies can't solve. How are you, Marinette? How are you holding up, knowing Cat is Adrian? Oh, to be honest, I'm not sure what to think. I'm not sure what he thinks. We both know I'm his lady and he is my kitty. He has always been there for me, even when I thought he'd walked away, even when I thought he had abandoned me. He has, and he did say he loved you, Tiki muttered with a mouthful of cookies and crumbs spraying out of her mouth. Oh, but that was because of the battle, or did he mean it? Marinette groaned, leaning her head back against the door. I don't know what to do next. Do I wait and see if he turns up for the date? I don't even know if I have Adrian's number anymore. It's been years since... Oh, all of this is so confusing. That was an understatement. It'd been two years since she had last spoken to Adrian, but only yesterday spoken to Kat. But Kat is Adrian. No... Exhaustion was causing her head to fog over and making the task of thinking too much. I think after some rest, things will become clearer. Tiki finished the last of the second treat and was searching for more. If you're ready, Tiki, let's take the fast route home. Spots on. Ladybug charged down the now cleared corridor. Everything was back in their places. The foyer was still clear of people, but it had transformed to its previous state, with its inverted pyramid and escalators taking you to the street above. But she could hear the rain drum hard against the glass. 
she exhaled. Even the weather was reflecting how she was feeling. What she hadn't expected to see was Adrian standing at the entrance. What was he still doing here? Was he waiting for her? But it was pouring down. He would get soaked if he stepped out now. An idea formed in her mind and couldn't help the smile spreading across her lips. She quickly dashed to the gift shop and selected a black umbrella from a stand, leaving a note on the cash desk and ran back to the foyer. He was still there. Whipping out a yo-yo, she landed directly in front of him. It was her turn to offer the umbrella, hoping, wondering if he remembered the moment six years previously, the gesture that caused her to fall in love with him. He had stepped out into the rain, glancing around with a sad expression. Her heart ached, watching the water soak into his jacket and how it dripped off his hair and face. As she splashed down, he turned and faced her with a questioning look. She opened up the umbrella and held it out to him. Here, thought you might need this. He gestured to the blue scarf, which was clenched tight in his left hand. Thanks, ladybug. Oh, why was this suddenly strange and awkward between them? Over the past few hours, they had been through so much together, but now, without an instant threat of an akumatized villain, the only thing that was at risk was her heart. And yet, this man standing before her, reminding her so much of the past, was also her kitty, who she knew so well. Um... Plag is still recovering. I need to get him a wheel of cheese before I can be, you know, again. But unfortunately, someone has already eaten through his back up stock. With her still holding the umbrella over him, he used his free hand to ruffle the back of his hair and stroke his neck. She smiled at the thought of Plag being overdramatic with his demands and realising it had been Adrian all along looking after this Kwame and now thinking of what kind of relationship they had. Well, it's kind of late. I don't think the cheese shop is open, but Papa... She paused, remembering it was okay. He knew. He knew she was Marinette. Papa has some cheese? I'm sure he won't mind. Not sure if it's as good. Cheese! She heard a groan coming from Adrian's chest. They both laughed, breaking some other tension. That would be good, if you don't mind, that is, coming round to yours. I think part of the reason why we have so much is for Cat coming round. I had made a comment a while ago and since then, Papa has ordered more. The cooling rain felt good against her hot, blushing cheeks. We could dry off and talk? If you want to, that is. Yes! The word burst out of his mouth. Talk, 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 talking would be good. There is so much I want to say and explain. B ladybug. The Akuma alarm had stopped and people were starting to emerge from the hiding spots and amble around the water features towards the overhang for cover, stopping when they noticed Ladybug and then Adrian Agress. We had better go before the phones come out. She handed him the umbrella as he placed the blue scarf back into his pocket. In one move, Ladybug wrapped an arm around his waist as he curled wand around hers, and then shot out a yo-yo to a nearby roof. They landed in an alleyway near the bakery. I thought it wouldn't be best if Ladybug landed on Marinette's balcony with Adrian Agress, she mumbled, her face against his neck. She had forgotten how tall Adrian, Cat, had got. Yeah, wise thought, he breathed into her hair. Goosebumps rippled down her neck. A realisation hit her like a lightning strike. She was about to detransform in front of Adrian for the first time. He knew. She knew he knew, but seeing it was different. An image of Adrian becoming cat, 
in the ballroom filled her thoughts, and how happy she was seeing it for real, but what would he think as he watched her? She slid her hand from around him and took a step back, unable to look at him. Spots off. Now it was Marinette's turn to get soaked, and yet not a single raindrop hit her face or splashed onto her oversized jumper. His cold, soaked fingers stroked under her chin, gently encouraging her to look up. There's my princess. Adrian held the umbrella over their heads, but she felt droplets gliding down her cheeks. It's always been you. He leaned in closer and kissed her lightly. Her racing heart took over. Flinging her arms around his neck, she kissed him back. Expressing all the love she had been pending inside, she pulled back. I love you. She breathed onto his lips. I love you, he returned, tilting his head to kiss her lightly on the forehead. We had better dry off before we get a cold. Marinette nodded against his lips and forced herself to breathe. Oh, this was too much. Follow me, she whispered. Her hand moved from his neck to his hand. They dashed over to the blue side door, grateful it was unlocked. Marinette, is that you back? Sabine's voice called through from the bakery. Yes, my mum. I'm fine. Got caught out. During the Kuma, Marinette called back, noticing a mischievous grin form across Adrian's face, reminding her of Cat. She tried to give him one of her warning looks, not to make a sound, but the grin only broadened. I'm going to dry off from the rain. Very good, darling, and welcome back, Adrian. Both of their eyes widened at her mother's words, guessing they had been spotted. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Dupang Chang. Adrian chuckled back whilst Marinette yanked him up the stairs. Once they were in her room, she let go of his hand and made her way over to the cupboard, pulling out three towels. If you hand me your suit jacket, I'll hang it up, she offered with her outstretched empty hand, exchanging it for a towel. It's a bit strange, isn't it? Not used to... She gave an embarrassed smile as he struggled to remove the clinging fabric from his damp shirt. There is a lot to be said for magical suits, Adrian said with a nervous tone and handed her the dripping jacket. Thank you. He placed the towel on the chaise before taking a seat. Marinette. She handed him the extra towel, knowing he would need it. I need to explain, he said softly twisting the fluffy fabric between his hands. Marinette knelt down in front of him, removing her own towel from her shoulders and placed it over Adrian's bowed head. You don't need to. She rubbed it across his hair. I should. I want to. It's only right. I need you to know why. Why I, Adrian, did what I did. He placed his hand on top of hers stopping the motion and slipping the fabric down from his head and onto his shoulders. She could feel the butterflies in her stomach. She always knew Adrian would have his reasons, but now, knowing that he was cat? Okay. His grip tightened on her hand as if he was fearful she would let go. I was really excited about our first date. I've had feelings for you, Marinette for a long while, months before I built up the courage to ask you out. I realized I'd fallen for you. His gaze shifted from hers as he let out a long breath. But when father found out that it was in fact you I wanted to date, who I had feelings for, he refused. Well. He did more than refuse. There was an anger there that I'd only seen a few times. Declaring it wasn't in the plan for me to be dating you. Even saying it would destroy everything he'd been building towards. Um, I that bad? 
she breathed, her heart cracking under the shame of what Adrian's family thought of her. No! Never! His eyes shot up and locked onto hers. I love you! I don't care what my father thinks or says. I told him that, which is when he told me. His forehead felt heavy against hers. He said he heard you had been accepted into the fashion design program. That you desire to be a designer one day. But with one word, he could take it all away. Unless I agreed to stop and walk away. I knew it was what you always wanted to do. Your love for it. She tried to pull back, but he wouldn't let her. I couldn't take that away from you, Marinette. That wasn't your choice to make, Adrian. She snapped. He loosened his grip and she was able to free herself from his hold. You should have told me. You should have given me the choice. Unless... What? Unless what? Unless you didn't want to. It was two years ago. Things were different. We were younger. We know each other better now. Well, I know Kat. I am Kat. I am Adrian. We are the same. We... The time we spent together would have been the same, even without the mask. So, is that it? For you, it didn't matter. Just show up as Kat and you get to spend time with me, Marinette? Whilst for me... I was rejected by Adrian. I was abandoned by a friend. Do you know how much teasing, bullying I went through by Chloe and Lila? She glared at him and then she realised. You do? Or should I say Cat did? I told him what I was going through. I cried on his shoulder whilst... Adrian ignored me at school and pretended like nothing happened between us. Do you know how hard that was for me too? To watch you go through that every day, knowing I was the one to cause that pain and the only way I could comfort you was to be Cat? He was now standing up beside her, trying to grip onto her shoulders but failing as she shrugged it off. It broke my heart to do that to you, Marinette. More than you could ever know. But if I had told you, would you have agreed or risk losing everything you have achieved for me? I don't know. I don't know what I would have done, but you should have given me the choice, Adrian. Or at least I would have understood why. She leant her head against the wooden post trying to hold herself up and not crumble. I'm sorry, Marinette. The pressure from his gentle touch in the middle of her back caused the dam to break inside of her. I should have said something at the time. You're right, and you might not believe me, but tomorrow, on a date, I was planning to reveal all to you. His words took her by surprise, and part of her that was Ladybug sprang forth. He jumped back at her narrowing eyes. Reveal everything. You mean you, Cat, were planning to tell me your identity? Everything. Yeah. He paused and then straightened himself. Yeah, I was. I love you, and I didn't want to make the same mistake twice. Start a relationship with you and not tell you? She rubbed her palm against her forehead, smoothing back her hair. And what about Ladybug? Were you planning to give her a heads up of your plan? I was going to run it past Ladybug. He shook his head and let out a shot of laughter. <laughs> You, tonight, on patrol, either one of you could have said no to finding out. But here we are, anyhow. He stepped closer and pressed his hands on her shoulders, which were now up at her ears. What a tangled mess we have found ourselves in, princess. 
he said in a soft tone. A head dropped, chin on chest, as a crown slammed into his chest. She groaned. I think that's an understatement. She felt herself melting as he wrapped his arms around her waist, drawing her in closer as he rested his chin on her hair. She could feel his heart racing through her touch. Oh, Adrian. I don't know what to think. I have been in love with both sides of you for the past six years. She closed her eyes as his lips kissed her hair. And even though our history has been messy in parts, you have always been there for me. She took in a sharp intake of breath as her emotions threatened to get the better of her. The heads moved in a dance, hers upwards as his cheek glided down hers until their eyes met and the lips touched. Six years, we have been in each other's hearts. Always there for one another, with or without the mask. But I'm so sorry, my love. Please forgive me, he breathed. A hand slid from his chest to his cheeks. To think how I have behaved in the past. As Ladybug, as Marinette even. I'm not so innocent myself. I forgive you, and please forgive me too. Always. The words were lost into the kiss. Wrapped into his arms, they sat side by side on the chase. But what do we do going forward, Adrian? How is your father going to react to us being together now? Because the last thing I want to do is come between you and your family. As long as I have you beside me, that's all that matters. My father can threaten me all he wants, but I will not stand by any longer and allow him to threaten or use you as leverage anymore. However, like I should have done two years ago, I leave the choice up to you. As long as you promise, I don't lose you. Never. You... Adrian or Kat, you will never lose me. I love you. And you're part of this family now, no matter what. But right now? Is it okay if we remain in this moment? I think that is all my head can cope with. And tomorrow we will face together. On our official first date. Nothing would make me happier. Well, in that case, cuddles, ice cream, cookie dough, fresh strawberries, and have you seen Who Rules the World by any chance? She said with a slight smirk across her lips. Adrian stood, letting out a chuckle and held out a hand for hers. <laughs> you had me at cuddles. Thank you for listening to the final part of Chance Encounter. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the whole series. Um, make, if you did, make sure you smash that like button, please. It really does help to send the love and support this channel. Make sure you comment down below what you thought of the final part. Is it what you expect? or not and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already you've survived a whole series why not subscribe and listen to the rest that I've got on the channel of more one shots and series and I hope you are good and I'll speak to you soon bye